Hi, my name is Talia Wall and I'm a 16 year old mixed artist from Maryland. Due to my very colorful ethnic background and interest in illustrating my, as well as many other ethnicities, I'm very excited to present my work to you today. My mom is Indian and was born and raised in South Africa. My dad is mixed, African, Native American, and Caucasian, and was brought up in Maryland. From as young as I can remember, I've had an affinity for creating artwork. Media such as books, movies, and plays have always fed my curiosity and inspired me to integrate creativity and passion into my art. I especially adore works of horror, comedy, manga, and black surrealism. Aside from painting, I also love to write, bake, and watch anime. I hope to study art in college and build a career for myself in which I can continue to nurture and grow as well as share my love for art. One of my biggest artistic goals is to create artwork that illustrate proper representation of people of color. I believe that people of color are highly underrepresented and misrepresented in the artistic community. And I aspire to change that by creating art that not only highlights the POC community, but also represents us from our own perspective rather than through outside interpretations. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you enjoy my work. Thank you. My name is Daniel Torres. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm mixed. My father is Black and Puerto Rican. My mother is Ashkenazi. I was born in Madison, Wisconsin. The pandemic brought me back here in 2020, and I intend to stay. I'm a watercolor painter. Here's some of my work. Art has been a lifelong passion, but I didn't start understanding my mixed identity deeply until well after I became an adult. Portraiture has steadily become the focus of my work. I think studying faces is my way of trying to understand how humans see each other, never quite knowing how my own face is being read by others. Looking back, I can see that I was making art about being mixed before I had even started consciously trying to process my mixed identity. This is a self-portrait I painted in the summer of 2021. I returned to some of my past ideas and used different colors to represent the different versions of myself, where they differ and where they overlap. I didn't capture everything, but I expect I'll paint more self-portraits as I develop my self-understanding and my technique. I would like to paint portraits of other mixed people too, but lately I've been thinking about portraiture more abstractly. Each painting in my series, Emerging Selves, begins without any subject in mind. I make a very loose, abstract underpainting with no goal other than to explore and make an interesting mess. I look for faces and figures, and I try to discover how they relate to one another. Over many layers and days spent thinking, I start to conjure stories out of the randomness. 
I find that watercolor is uniquely suited to exploring the fluidity of identity and the layers that make us whole. In many ways, painting like this reminds me of the process of exploring my mixedness, first searching and then connecting and making meaning. Being mixed often involves searching, searching for commonality and community, searching for belonging, searching for histories that are vague, stolen or forgotten, rewritten, unwritten, erased. Seeking these stories involves imagining what might have been, and finding belonging means connecting with others who are related not just by ancestry, but by lived experience. Incorporating this searching into my painting process is challenging, but it helps remind me that clarity and connection can be found or made both on and off the paper. For me, being a mixed person means continually re-examining my identity and the world around me, so I will never be finished making art about it. Moving forward, I hope to collaborate with other mixed artists and use my art to build community and belonging.
My name is Richard Kessler. In my artwork, I'm interested in how contexts shape meaning. I'm interested in critiquing different types of visual languages and the spaces they occupy. And often my concerns are drawn from cultural studies and history. The artwork I've shared for this year's Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference was a family portrait that was created to commemorate the 45th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. The photograph captures multiple layers of history. The setting is Milton Lee Olive Park, a Chicago park dedicated to the first Black American to receive the Medal of Honor from the Vietnam War. In the background of the photo is the Hancock Center, a grand skyscraper that was the world's second tallest building when it was built during the peak of the war in 1969. As a result of that very war and its aftermath, our relatives became refugees and settled in Chicago in the 1980s. Given that Vietnam War memorials in the U.S. usually neglect Vietnamese subjectivity, I treated the park as a backdrop. In doing so, this artwork exhibits its subjects' ties to the city, its spaces, and its architecture. Dressed in red, white, and blue Aoyai, Vietnam's national costume, I reflect on the hybridity of my family history. This history spans multiple generations, and it includes Amerasians, South Asians in Vietnam, and Vietnamese in America. The artwork considers the legacy and memory of the war and how such issues are carried into the present. Milton Lee Olive III was a resident of the Englewood neighborhood on Chicago's South Side. And he was killed uh, on, on duty in Vietnam uh, in October of 1965. He was uh, honored by President Lyndon B. Johnson with the uh, first uh, Medal of Honor to be given to a Black soldier for service in the Vietnam War. Um, there was a ceremony held at the White House with his parents in attendance uh, in um, April of 1966. And then in June, um, on June 19th of 1966, there was a ceremony to dedicate Dan Kiley's designed park uh, in memory of, of Olive. The park is wedge-shaped, if you will. Uh, it is comprised of five circular pools of varying uh, sizes that are connected with diagonal walkways. Those pools are said to represent the five Great Lakes. Dan Kiley also uh, described them as being inspired by the placement of the rocks at Ranji uh, in Kyoto. There is a cantilevered triangular uh, viewing deck from which one can look out toward the city and toward the spectacular skyline. The plant palette is rather limited, hawthorn and honey locust trees and turf lawn.
I'm Nalia Kaya, and I'm just going to share a little bit with you about some of the art that you'll be seeing. So a couple of things that will help give some context. Um, the first is that you'll see a lot of me kind of using my my art as a way to explore and learn about my own culture. Um, my dad is an immigrant from Turkey, and the painting behind me is actually one that he did. Uh, my mom's side, they're also artists as well um, in different mediums. And uh, another important part of my art is that I use it to really engage in artivism. So uh, combining art and activism to try to create um, not just awareness, but to actually address social issues, whether that's through fundraising um, or getting uh, people to engage in some form of activism through the art itself. Uh, so there are a couple of slides that I wanted to share with you. So this first one will give context to uh, some of the pieces that you'll see, um, which are inspired by Turkish rugs um, or Turkish carpet motifs that you'll see. And so here I've kind of highlighted one of my favorite books to go through. Um, it's is always fun for me to see now when I get like a new rug, uh, if I can kind of decode it, so to speak, um, and identify different symbols. Um, so in the photograph, um, the earrings, you, I call them kind of my contemporary or modern takes um, on the uh, symbols that you see in the rugs. So these were created um, with jade, um, glass beads, sterling silver, and wood. I, I've always just had this fascination and love for wood beads. Um, and that is something I love to do is to take pieces and deconstruct them. Um, my mom will often find pieces in thrift stores, um, wood jewelry, and she'll get it for me. And I like to deconstruct and um, reclaim pieces uh, a lot of times from necklaces into earrings. And you'll see some uh, deconstructed reclaimed pieces in the slideshow. And this is one of the ways that I engage in artivism. So I have the Praliche or Queen collection, which is really to bring awareness to um, about feminist side, particularly in Turkey, um, but also unfortunately, globally, this is an issue in, in every, pretty much every culture. And so any of the pieces that have the women's symbol are a part of the Praliche collection. Um, and you'll also notice a lot of purple. Um, it is uh, tea from Turkey uh, and it's flowers. And so within a lot of the demonstrations over there, you'll see the purple and the women's symbol. And so it's kind of a nod to that and highlighting the issue and proceeds profits um, from these pieces. Uh, there will be a portion that will be donated to the Turkish philanthropy gender equality fund. Um, so that's just one of the ways that I hope to help make a difference um, as well as bring awareness to a social issue. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of the videos and slides. You'll probably see a few cameos from at least two of my dogs in there. Um, and I don't really have fancy studio spaces. So you're going to get little snippets of um, my semi messy house. <laughs> um, and so thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time out to spend these few moments with me. So yeah, this is my super high-tech <laughs> beating situation. I have a couple helpers. They are sleeping on the job. And I believe <laughs> he's camera shy. And there's another one hiding out in his crate. 
Alright, um, actually I think I'm going to stop the video there just because it's kind of hard to try to bead right under this phone on top of my little mug. Kind of create wherever um <laughs> this is actually my office slash dog room <laughs> um so kind of wherever i can clear the space off i'm getting ready to do a set of resin um this is going to be the turkish rose So this is my setup at the moment, a mess. Um, I have a little, a little friend here. <laughs> Jasper is a great artist. He helps a lot. <laughs> so what I'm working on right now is this piece right here. <clears throat> so there's actually already some resin in there that dried from yesterday. And the reason I did that is because I'm gonna put flowers and a charm in today and it's gonna make it look like it's floating in the middle. So did um, this for example uh, you can see it was poured over the top and so this one is settled in the back um, but the charm today is actually gonna look like it's kind of halfway in the middle there floating towards the top um, so yeah that's what I will be finishing up um, and then probably have the finished result on the website or in another photo